Hello everyone. Welcome back to our channel. Today I have come with a very important topic in emergency room that is management of bleeding in a patient on anticoagulation. Generally life threatening bleeding which can be in these forms that is GI bleed, intracranial hemorrhage, severe epistasis, genitourinary bleed, pericardial collection, retroperitoneal, intraperitoneal and trauma related bleeding which can be secondary to anticoagulant are seen in emergency department. So our primary goal in emergency department is mainly initial resuscitation and achieving rapid hemostasis in such patients. So let's see how can we manage these patients in emergency room. So the first and the main important step is assessment of ABCDE and stabilization of our ABCDE that is our airway, breathing, circulation, disability and exposure. So few of the points to keep in mind while assessing our ABCDE and stabilizing wherein to stabilize the circulation two large IV bore cannulas must be placed isotonic crystalloids must be considered in case of hemodynamic instability administration of blood and blood products must be considered and must be defined according to massive transfusion protocol in case of trauma and if there is no intracranial hemorrhage permissive hypotension with restricted volume therapy can be targeted wherein maintaining a systolic blood pressure up to 90 mm Hg can be considered along with blood and blood products calcium must be monitored and must be corrected while resuscitation hypothermia and acidosis must be corrected which can worsen coagulopathy and worsen the bleeding further. Management of bleeding can be done based on the site of the bleeding. If it is an external bleeding then local compression bandage or tunique can be used. Local hemostatic agent in case of variceal bleeding sensitican black mold tube can be used. In case of severe epistasis nasal packing can be considered based on the site of bleeding. Management of the bleeding can be done. Next coming to tranexamic acid. Let's see the role of tranexamic acid in anticoagulated patients. According to various studies, it was found that tranexamic acid did not reduce mortality when used in anticoagulated patients. It doubled the risk of venous thromboembolism and hence was preferably not considered in case of anticoagulated patients but can be considered in trauma related bleeding wherein 1 gram of tranexamic acid can be given in the first 3 hours. Next coming to activated charcoal. Activated charcoal increases elimination of all DOAG and therefore be used within a few hours in case of bleeding after overdose or accidental ingestion. Next is we have to stop all the anticoagulants, antiplatelets, NSAIDs and anti-inflammatory that the patient is taking. Next coming to history, a quick history must be considered wherein we have to ask what drug the patient is taking that is what anticoagulant and what was the indication of taking the anticoagulant what was the dose the patient was taking and when was the last dose taken. We have to ask history of kidney disease as kidney disease increases the time of elimination of this DOAG from the body. We have to ask history of other comorbidities and we have to ask the history of other antiplatelets and other drug usage. Next coming to the initial investigations that has to be performed from the emergency room. First, first and the basic thing is a complete blood count to look for hemoglobin PCV and also platelet count. Next is blood gas can be performed to look for base deficit and lactates which would guide the resuscitation. Renal function test must be performed, liver function test must be performed. Based on the type of anticoagulant, the coagulation test must be performed. If the anticoagulant is unknown, then we can perform APTT, PT, TT, antifactor 10A. In case of dabigatran, APTT and TT must be performed. In case of apixaban and rivaroxaban, PT and antifactor 10A must be performed. In case of warfarin, PT INR must be considered. In case of hepatic dysfunction, rather than PT APTT INR, viscoelastic assays can be performed that is TEG and ROTEM which can help and guide resuscitation. In case to localize the foci of bleeding, a point of care ultrasound can be performed in the emergency room. And if focus doesn't help, a CT scan with contrast must be performed to localize the site of bleed. Next coming to anticoagulant reversal which is very important. In case if the patient was on vitamin K antagonist that is warfarin and patient had an elevated INR along with life threatening and serious bleed. In the initial management we have to give vitamin K which is given in the dose of 10 mg IV bolus. Onset of action is slow. It takes 2 hours after IV administration. Next is 4 factor prothrombin complex concentrate which contains factor 2, 7, 9 and 10. Protein C and protein S must be given which is given IV. Effect begins in 30 minutes and last for 6 to 8 hours based on the INR the doses. If the INR is more than 6 the dose is 50 units per kg. If the INR was between between 4 to 6 the dose is the dose is 35 units per kg and if the INR was less than 4 the dose is 25 units per kg. Alternatively 
fresh frozen plasma can be used but at the risk of volume overload which can be given in the dose of 10 to 15 ml per kg IV infusion or recombinant factor 7A can be used which is given at the dose of 80 mg per kg slow IV. Next coming to anticoagulant reversal for dabigatran, Edaricizumab, a monoclonal antibody that, that binds with dabigatran similar to thrombin. It is given in a dose of 5 gram IV. It results in complete reversal. In case if immediate reversal is required, hemodialysis can be effective with removal of 60% or more of the drug in 2 hours. Apart from this, 4-factor prothrombin complex concentrate and recombinant factor 7A can reverse the anticoagulant effect of dabigatran. Next coming to factor 10A inhibitors, aldexanate alpha is effective. It is a modified human 10A protein. It binds with high affinity to the factor 10A inhibitors and thus inactivates its effect. Dose depends upon the timing of consumption of anticoagulants and the dose of the anticoagulant. If the anticoagulant was taken more than 8 hours ago and the dose was lesser that is rivaroxaban less than 10 mg and apixaban less than 5 mg, then lower dose can be given that is 400 mg within 15 minutes followed by 2 hour infusion of 4 mg per minute and if the dose was taken within less than 8 hours and the rivaroxaban was more than 10 mg and apixaban was more than 5 mg then higher dose of aldexanate alpha can be used that is 800 mg within 30 minutes followed by 2 hour infusion of 8 mg per minute. Next coming to Fondaparinex, evidence suggests recombinant factor 7a in a dose of 90 mg per kg IV is effective. Next coming to heparin wherein the anticoagulant is protamine sulfate which is given in a dose of 1 mg IV per 100 units of IV unfractionated heparin which is administered over the past 3 hours. Protamine does not completely reverse low molecular weight heparin wherein if it was taken less than 8 hours the dose is 1 mg is given for every 1 mg of enoxaparin and if it was taken more than 8 hours ago, then the dose is 0.5 mg which is given for every 1 mg of enoxaparin. In case of daltaparin and tinzaparin, the dose is, the dose is 1 mg for every 100 units of daltaparin and tinzaparin and if APTT is still deranged, after 4 hours, second dose of 0.5 mg per 100 units can be given. Next coming to hirudins, coagulation factor replacement that is fresh frozen plasma or 4 factor prothrombin complex concentrate can be used if bleeding is present. This is a representation of the same which I have just explained. So hope this was useful. Thank you.